Hey folks, welcome back to Parts and Restoration. I'm Dave. Today we're going to explore this electric hammer from Black & Decker. Now when I first saw this toolbox, I half expected to see a claw hammer with a power cord sticking off of it, and but I found this instead. The antique precursor to the modern rotary hammer. Now this has a reciprocating hammer that lives inside of the cylinder that's in my left hand. And it's powered by the motor in between the grip and the uh, long end. When you pull the trigger, the hammer goes back and forth, striking one of these either cutting or impact bits that came with the tool. And we're going to start out by restoring those. We're going to use evapo rust just to soak these while the rest of the restoration is taking place. Now, like any other restoration, we're going to take our machine apart, taking close uh, notes as to what screws and fasteners go where. And take a look there. You can see there's a stud off of the middle of that motor that causes the, ex the ex an eccentric that converts the rotational force of the motor to a linear striking force for the hammer end. Now we're going to take this motor apart. There's one of the brushes and we're going to get everything nice and clean. Uh, there's a lot of grease and oil that got on the inside of this tool. This tool clearly lived a very rough life. There's grease mixed in with masonry dust and it just was really filthy on the inside. And this tool actually does work in its original state. So this is more of a rescue. We're just getting this tool nice and clean so it can continue to live and work um, without wearing itself out due to lack of preventative maintenance. As you can see, the entire windings assembly of this motor is covered in filth. So what I'm using is uh, odorless mineral spirits and a wire brush just to get in there and get all of that stuff off. It was thick, it was sticky, and it needed some solvent to get it away. Same deal with the motor cover. Uh, this was just absolutely disgusting and look how well it cleaned up. I'm getting in there with an air gun to just blow away the debris that's left by, the, uh, left by my solvents. This is the housing for the hammer itself, and I'm just cleaning the outside of, it. outside of it. You can see there's a lot of grease built up in the nooks and crannies, and I'm using a, uh, a scratch at all to get that clean. Again, more wire brush action getting into the nooks and crannies. Nice US-made part patented here in the US. There's the actual strike part of the hammer, and there's the inside of that casting. We're just blowing off all the solvent, and you can see it left a pretty clean finish. And to get that nice and clean, I went in with a cup brush on my angle grinder just to polish the surface up a little bit. I didn't go fully, I didn't fully invest in this um, to spend the time to sand everything up to a mirror finish. Now we're going into our reassembly, just putting the hammer assembly back in place. That's actually the weighted part of the assembly. And that's the rotor of the motor, the ball bearing and its fan. And everything assembled nicely. Just easily, very easy to work on is a hallmark of these old tools. They were easy to be taken apart, uh, very intuitive how they can be put back together. Just reinstalling the motor. A couple of uh, machine screws hold that in place, very easy. Putting our brushes back in place, the brush cap, and then we're going to screw that back down. And our handle just bolts onto the rear of the tool. And we're going to reinstall the trigger which was just a snap action on off trigger. There's no, <laughs> this is way before microprocessors. This is an on off, a simple electrical trigger. And the, the box was pretty filthy as well and I wanted to get that nice and clean. Um, I just used some denatured alcohol to remove all the filth from the bottom of that without harming any of the wood. And I wound up getting a splinter, a bad one. <laughs> Brutal. Now everything's nice and clean, back in its original configuration in the box, ready for service, and I'm going to do a test run on this tool out back. Let's check it out. So that star-shaped bit just pushes all of those bits of masonry out of the way. No problems at all. Now that handle that's attached to there is used for rotating the tool, which I did not know at the time but that allows it to create round holes by, by turning the handle 90 degrees to make that round hole. But it just pushed right through that uh, concrete, no problem at all. Great restoration, worked out well. Guys, uh, check me out on Instagram. A lot of more pictures of this restoration on my Instagram account. Uh, if you want to support my work, check me out on Patreon. And of course, like, share, and subscribe. 
you guys are the best. We'll see you in the next restoration. Thank you.